This is Steve Downs, the voice of Master Chief Spartan 117. Welcome to Quality Time, the KO Koala Entertainment Podcast. Anthony and Skyler will take it from here. Master Chief, out. Welcome to Quality Time, the KO Koala Entertainment Podcast. My name is Anthony Nicolosi. I'm Skylar Sokol. And today, we are joined by the audio design master, but now also not former audio design master. Still for uh, still an audio design master, but now also his uh, uh, the leader of his own studio, Mr. Eduardo Ortiz Frau. Is that... Did I say that okay? Yes, perfect. Okay, right on. Eduardo, can you introduce yourself a little bit for the people in the audience? Sure. Uh, well, as you said, I'm a sound. I was uh, for the last decade. I have been a sound designer uh, in indie games specifically, and I have been lucky enough to work in games like The Stanley Parable and Borogoa and everything and What Remains of Edith Finch. And yeah, they, they were very successful and very happy about that. And, and now after doing sound specifically for the last decade, I'm kind of moving on to a different part of my career as, a, you know, establishing a studio, be, being head of a creative team. And, and that's it. And we're about, you know, we're working on our first project, kind of like trying to get this prototype together so that we can get funding for it. And, and put it out there and all the good stuff. I'm curious, does your studio have a name yet or is it is un, currently unnamed? No, it does. It does. It's called Gro- Groovebox Games. Groovebox. Groovebox. Yeah. Okay. Oh, Groovebox. Groovebox, yeah. Groovebox Games. Let's I like go. it. Okay. Nice alliteration on that. Uh, Very nice. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I mean, a Groovebox is it's like a little music making machine, right? It's right. Like box. It's like a like a beatbox, like a like a drum machine. So right. our games are musical in nature. So that's why that's going to get a plus wow. one for me. Same. Yeah. Eduardo, by the way, check out what I got right here. Just so you know. Yeah. Oh, you bought it when I showed you. It, I right? bought one. Yeah, I have one. This <laughs> yes. is just our, yes. the uh, arcade sound one. For those yeah, who are listening I, on I, audio, Skylar just held up some weird ass looking thing <laughs> to the camera. <laughs> That he immediately bonded with Eduardo over. We, yeah, it's called a pocket <laughs> operator. It's like a mini synthesizer. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Very yeah. cool. So, uh, okay. So, Eduardo, I think the first thing I wanted to ask you is how did you get started working on games? Uh, is, did you have a connection? I mean, because like you said, what a freaking resume of games to work on. Even as a, a growing up, always a console kid like i only played mostly tri- big triple a games i've heard of those games you know <laughs> sure, um sure. How, tell us a little bit about your journey getting into those opportunities well i i was in music for a long time like i studied classical composition and audio engineering and i i worked in recording studios and i was in bands and then i got tired of being poor and <laughs> i i needed a new i needed like a new avenue to explore and then i went to austin because i was in puerto i'm puerto rican i was in puerto rico for all this i i left i went to austin and and i started discovering the kind of the indie game scene in austin which at that time was very it was thriving it was like it was, it, there's a lot happening and it was really awesome so i just like randomly went to this games event it was like a little meetup thing i didn't even know what it was but then I realized it was a games thing. And immediately I just like went to the person who was talking in the microphone and I was like, Hey, you know, I'm trying to get into this whole deal. Like, you know, I, I, I do sound like, I don't know. Do you have any pointers? And he was like, Hey, you should talk to that guy. He does sound. And I went to that guy and he's the guy I did the Stanley Parable with in terms of like the audio. Oh shit. And I was like, Hey man, I hear you do audio. I, I want to help you out. You don't have to pay me anything. I just want to learn. And, and he was like, yeah, sure, let's do it. And, and that was it. That's, that's how we started. That's how I started. He already did it. And, and then I just started helping him out. And 
and again, it was like, I was just trying to learn, like I wasn't trying to make money. I mean, I, it was like a career path, but not at the, I wasn't like demanding money at that moment. Right. Mm -hmm. But within, you know, six months, uh, I was already like, he was already starting to pay me because obviously I was useful and I was making good work and, and I, you know, I learned fast. Um, and then within a couple of years, I was already, I would say maybe three, three and a half years, I, I was able to just make it full time. And be, in that moment, meaning in that time, I was also a server. And, you know, like within a period of like three years, I would lower my my waiting shifts and then just like do more audio work. Right. For sure. And, and that's like it. It's going to happen. Kind of like, <laughs> I want, I think the main thing that guy uh, who his name is Robin Arnott. The main thing he taught me is, is how to move in that industry. Meaning it's like, Oh, uh, what, um, how do you say, like what events to go to, like, how, mm -hmm. how do, how do people do this on an indie level, you know? And, and, and that was it. Yeah. I was able to meet a lot of people. I mean, Heard for the these. indies, the, that's awesome for the indies who listen to this. Um, I, it's something we actually have not been to any in-person events, um, that, yeah. Game devs generally recommend going like GDCs, never been to a GDC. We've watched a shit ton of GDC videos on YouTube as have been yeah. heavily influential on our operations, whatever. But we've never been to any sure. of these events. And I always see um, and your story kind of backs up. I always see game devs talking about like these events are such big networking opportunities, et cetera, et cetera. It sounds like you probably yeah. back yeah. that up. In my previous think... conversations with Eduardo, like the main thing I came away with was that his connections he gained through these conferences were like one of the most important things for him finding the work he was doing. Oh, I mean, it was everything. Uh, the truth is all my work came from these conventions. Like there's, I mean, and it's not just meeting people, which meeting people is, is, is meaning the networking part is, it's fairly easy in the sense that you're literally just meeting new friends, people that have, things in common with you and then eventually those relationships turn into professional relationships right because at some point they're going to need a sound designer and then they know you're a sound designer and then they you know they hit you up so uh, i lost my train of thought i don't even know where what, what i was no saying. right but, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah tell me, tell me. um you were just talking about why conferences were so important and those connections were yeah so there important. was two parts that's, that's one thing no, because okay, we were, okay, yeah, yeah. So there we go. There's another you thing, which is, yeah, there's another thing, which is like, if you're going to these conferences, you're already passing a filter of somebody who takes this seriously, seriously sure. enough to spend sure. money to go to this other city, uh, rent this hostel, uh, spend money on the ticket. You know, like a lot of people won't do that. So you're, you, you already, you already passed that filter, which that in itself is, it, it, I think is a big step, you know, so. So people take you seriously. And if you go one year after the other, people take you really seriously, right? And that's that's what you want. Uh, so people know you're a legit. Like, I think you mean, awesome you're you're, seri you're serious about what you're doing. Yeah, you know? yeah. It's I not think a that's hobby, great advice. Basically. Yep. Yeah. Have you ever given talks or anything at some of these conferences? I did some Googling yeah. and I saw some YouTube panels, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I've never given a talk. I never submitted a talk to GDC, uh, but... Yeah, at dif different ones. I think the most exciting one was was one in Denmark uh, at what is it? What, what, it's like the the Nordic Game Jam, which is like one of the most I've heard I of guess, that. Famous, okay. yeah, 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 game jams, and, and it's like a nice conference, and and they paid me to go over there. Well, they didn't pay me; they paid for the ticket, and then I stayed like two months. I, I, I like divided the the plane tickets that they bought for me like two months, and I just like traveled all over. Sick! That's but, awesome. Yeah. I do like well, giving talks a lot, but they, they take work, you know, like you, I cannot wing it basically. What was the topic okay. of your talk for that conference? That conference was right after what remains of Edith Finch, Go to Goa and everything were just like released back to back. And it was just like about my process for those three games. That was actually a very hard time, meaning that like I was completely uh swamped burned out no yeah I was burned out. Holy I, shit. I, was, I was done with those all those it was like seven projects in the period of 15 months that they were holy just like back, fuck. Back, back to back being released uh, and release is the hardest time in development right because you have a ton of shit to do and if you're constantly just like doing you know releasing back to back 
you know, really get that rest period, right? So, so yeah, after that, I kind of took a long break and then I decided that I was going to do my own thing. Hmm. So, we're, uh, so one thing that from the outside, it appears that the game industry a lot of times is pretty like closed down, like closed people, lots of secrets, lots of things hidden behind NDAs and um, mm -hmm. people keeping things secret. I'll, it makes sense in a lot of ways because uh, so much of like the, especially the marketing cycles built off of hype and trying to manage yeah. that yeah. and drive that, whatever. But that the fact that you were working on so many projects during that time span, were you working on these projects concurrently? Were those studios cool with you? Like working, doing work for them and others at the same time, or were you just, it just lined up? No, I was work, working on them all at the same time. And yeah, I think most studios, yeah, I mean, that's what they expect because they don't want to hurt. They don't want to, they don't want you as, or at least as a sound person a lot of times. If you're not working for like AAA studios, they, they don't want the burden of of having you as an employee, right? That's hard. Right. But if you're a freelancer and you're doing multiple projects, and also like a lot of times these developments are slow, you know, because they're smaller teams. So you might not have enough to do if you are full time, right? It's like, but if you do right. like one one week a month or two weeks a month, right, and then you hop to another one, then then that keeps a a, a good pace, right? But yeah, I, I mean, within the indie crowd, I think within development, within developers, and, and this might be more indie developers, but because I know AAA studios are like very strict, but I don't know, people share their work all the time, you know, like a, people trust each other. So, so it's not like a big deal. I trust, if I show you my game, which, you know, I, I show Tyler, eh, sorry, eh, Skyler, uh, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't think he'll go off and, and talk about it, right? It's like so, so it's, it's, it's pretty open. Uh, but, Skyler but is I, a nice guy, though. Skyler is a nice guy. Sure, sure. <laughs> I think most, most people, most people. I'll tell you, Eduardo, you're guy. talking to maybe the most paranoid person I've ever met in my life about people stealing uh, game secrets. Yeah. So if you can convince yeah. them otherwise, <laughs> I would be really happy. So you should definitely try. <laughs> yeah, I think. I mean. I guess stealing in the industry happens, but I don't know. You, you have to show things very publicly and then some weird China, you know, ch Chinese company will Rips take your concept. And, <laughs> but it's like, it ha it's like one, I don't know, in, in 10,000 games, you know, like, or, you know, like that happens. Right. So, and it's not like you're uh, just showing your game to anyone, it. right? You're showing it to developers who you know and stuff like right. that, right? Right, 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 right. Yeah. No, that's interesting. Uh, yeah, I don't. I don't think it would change my perspective on generally not trusting people. But, yeah. but it is cool to know because I was. I uh, you you mentioned that you work like one to two weeks a month on a project when you were doing this kind of style, and then you would do another sure. one. That kind of sounds fun, but you know, especially I'm thinking of just like it sounds like if if I was doing audio work and I knew how to do audio work and I was yeah, jumping sure. between projects like that it might be fun but was that also i don't know did you find it fun did you find it just like really not for, stressful? No, for a long time it was really fun like i mean for a long time i i i loved it right it's like it was when when i don't know i guess when it started to feel like work after you know x amount of years is i knew i needed to shift focus and, and then do my own thing because again it started to feel like work and not fun but it was great i think it's the shipping back to back that all of a sudden, it, it, all the games just aligned to ship kind of like back to back. That was just a, that was just too much. Uh, mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. I'm curious. You were talking about you like gave a talk on your process, uh, the North Game Jam, and all of that. I'm curious, like, what's your favorite part of the sound design process when you were doing it? Like, what what mm -hmm. phase of it was your favorite part? Was it like coming up with the sounds? Was it the actual like technical work of making the sounds or finding the sounds? Was it like working with the teams to come up with like what sounds? Mm. I don't know. I feel like a lot I of our think, audience probably doesn't know very much at all about like what the sound designer sound sure, process sure, for sure, games sure, are. Sure. So I think one of the cool things of, let's say, working in games that is different from working in movies, working in just music, is the fact that you get to switch kind of like the parts of your brain that you're using, right? It's like you might be very into the art aesthetic 
thing that is, you know, so like artsy and stuff, but then you have to design systems, right? And then you kind of switch back uh, to like, a, switch to a more logical, you know, you're talking to the programmers and you're describing how you want things to be happening. And, and then you're just purely describing systems that are going to be, you know, playing the, the sound stuff, right? The artsy stuff you made. But it, it's that back and forth that makes games enjoyable for a lot of us right right in the sense, like people that, that kind of like do one both and not yeah because and of the was movie yeah, yeah. in the movie the sounds are like just defined right you don't have to create these events and i actually didn't know this you right. told me this when right. we talked originally that actually in sound design for games you as the sound designer are not just responsible for making the sounds but also like defining the events and the systems where that play and react to yeah. those sounds could you yeah, go into yeah, more yeah. detail about like what that looks like Sure, sure. I mean, the, the thing is, it all depends on the on the team and how much the you know the, the core team or the leads want the sound designer involved. As a rule of thumb, you want them as 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 in, as how do you say like the more involved they are, the better. Mm -hmm. The more involved they are, the the better it's gonna sound because the truth is they are the ones who know what's up when it comes to sound. That's why they're professional right, right. at that, right? It's like if they, let's say, if they just gave you a bunch of sound assets and then they left you to do to do something with them, it's not going to sound as good as if they implement it, right? Because they know why they created this, this I don't know, this list of assets, right? They know how those, those sounds are going to interact, et cetera. So usually a person like me uh, wants to do both, right? It's like uh, they want to design the systems, and they want to implement those, create the events, and and then, but it's how do you say it's, it's a tight relationship to the programmer too, because unless the sound designer also programs, which you know most most sound designers will not, but they could. You know, I learned a bit of programming now for my new project, but yeah, it's a it's a tight relationship with the programmer, and and it's mainly in my experience, it's been me telling the programmer what I want what I want to happen, and then figuring out with the programmer how we're going to do that, you know. Does, okay. that, does that explain? Yeah, yeah, that's great. That's exactly what I was looking yeah. for. So you, so what, what, was that when you start, ended your audio design uh, journey? Like when you stopped being just full-time audio designer was after that release? Um, I did one more game after that, after those, that, those three big After releases. party, right? Yeah, after party. After party was a year, and then after party was that during that project I was actually full time because they were a bigger company, or right? it's like okay. the same people right. that did Oxen Free and they were growing mm -hmm. as a company. Mm -hmm. You know, like now it's like I guess you could call it triple I, right? They just got bought, <laughs> by you know, they just got bought by Netflix. So they're I definitely, that, yeah. yeah, they're definitely growing, right? So at that point, you know, they would just hire some a person full time, and after that project ended. I knew I couldn't do it anymore. <laughs> I don't want to sound, I don't know, uh, I don't know, sad about it. But I just, I just knew like my journey as a sound designer, I think had come to an end, and it was time to to make games. You know, yeah, design. Games. Interesting. Yeah. So, did you have any preparation for that? Were you? Did you have a game plan going into that, or you just kind of what did it? Well, I had an idea. Uh, yeah, I had, okay. I had a I had an idea I felt very strongly about, which is what we're doing now. I had a lot of connections in the industry, right? Meaning I, I knew a lot of people and and then and then yeah, I guess I don't know. If you have some amount of resource, I mean I had savings, right? So, so I knew I did, I could take time off to focus on this and and, and be, you know, take a, a little, how do you say, a little budget for this prototype, etc. So I, you know, I was financially capable of doing it uh, because I made enough money in my sound career to have some savings, right? I knew I had connections and I knew a lot of people and, and whoever I didn't know, uh, I knew people who would know, right? So, and that was, that's like 10 years of building network, right? Yep, uh, yep. And, and then I had the attitude of like, well, if I don't do it now, I mean, I just, you just have to try it, man. I mean, you guys are making your own game. You just, you just have to try it and... It might fail or it might go well. So, yeah, I mean, I just it. I find it interesting. One benefit I 
think it's a benefit that we have is that we're coming into this cold from a game development perspective. We've never made a game before, so we don't have... Or even participated in the development of a game. Yeah, or participated yeah, right. in the development of it. So we don't have any... I don't know that we don't have any benefits of that experience nor um, negative, you know, influence from that. I feel like based off of some of the stories I hear from game dev, I could easily see how after working 10 years in the industry, you'd be like, I think I'm done with games. Like I'm more interested in the fact that you didn't just like go to movies, you know, and be like, okay, Man, I'll games talk about that. I'll talk about that because okay. this is something Okay, I do think games is a special industry, meaning I don't think I could find what I found in games in any other industry. Uh, in terms of the people in it, like like okay, this is this is this is a an art form, like how do you say a medium that has composers, artists, like designers, programmers, like there's all kinds of people working together, right and and we, we've, which in itself makes things very interesting, you know, like, and, and, and there's, they're very talented, right? So you're constantly being exposed to really awesome ideas. And also games are not cool, right? By meaning it's like they're nerdy, right? So that means that they don't have this attitude of, I don't know, like, like they're not actors and actresses who, who are constantly, you know, in the spot. I think I get what you mean. Yeah. Um, they're not musicians who have to be really cool and look really cool on stage, right? It's like, so basically these are really talented, intelligent people that don't have this overly developed ego. And that makes it okay. really nice. That makes it really, I mean, I, I, I say nerdy in the best way. I'm a total nerd and I love that. I love people <laughs> who are nerdy and, and can just nerd out about whatever they love and, and don't, don't carry this big ego because well, because again, movie and music is such is such a performance thing, and I don't know. Yeah, it's 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 just, it's just a different feel. I I think it's really uh, interesting because as we've interacted with, we definitely don't have like the connections and network that you have, but we hope to eventually. But um, but even the people we've interacted to in a limited capacity, like you and the other people we've had on the podcast, it's just been so surprising that like basically regardless of how successful they are or how well known they are, they're always like such nice like chill people and it's so clear yeah. that they don't really have that that ego and they they just want to talk about games because yeah. they love doing games yeah and it, yeah and i think it's because the, the spotlight is not on us yeah right like the public yeah. doesn't know who we are so so yeah I, I think that makes a big difference well that's actually that's that's an interesting t thing to bring up because you know, when we first started our studio, it's it's it was actually, I don't know, a bit of a vision point of ours is that most studios, when you think of a game, you generally fans generally have a stronger relationship between the publisher and the game than the development studio and the game. Um, not always the case, and it definitely differs between AAA and indie studios right. and the demographics that are in there. But yeah. the way you're talking about that, um, it almost sounds like that's kind of nice. It's like, yeah, let the publishers get the attention. Leave us alone. We just love making games. Do you do you get that vibe from some people? Yeah. I mean, the internet is a strange place. And if you're constantly getting attention from it, you know, that's like a double-edged sword. So, uh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> I would say that's good. <laughs> that's yeah, really on one hand, we've... We have uh, we've we've started to build a community. On the other hand, I get some of the weirdest ass memes you've ever seen on my Instagram <laughs> DMs. So yeah, yeah, it's pros and cons for sure. No, it's an interesting <laughs> balance, right? Because for an indie studio to like successfully market their game and have it like get the vision, especially self published, because you know we're planning to be self published, we almost have mm -hmm. to put ourselves out into the spotlight a lot more than if we like had a publisher and that sort of. It's sure, one of the risks sure, we're taking. Sure. I know you at least have told me that you're interested in doing a, your game through a publisher. Do you have any thoughts on like yeah. why you feel that way or what your what your motivations with that are? Well, I think I mean I think it has to do with like how many hours in the day there are to do things, and <laughs> and publishers can handle a lot of things that I I may not have interest in doing. Right? I want to focus on the development side, and and I do think once 
this this right it's like establishing a company establishing a new pro a, a project i mean i am going to have to be more outward facing but it's i don't know it's still not being an actor in a movie mm -hmm. it's still not like no, being yeah. a, a, right it's still like way smaller scale right. so yeah it, it still feels different and and i'm not opposed to again do, doing that uh like talking in public and but I don't know. It's just different, right? Yeah. Like, worst case, you like... just like say the word "fuck" at the game awards, and then make it takes two. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There you go. Yeah. I feel like it's also an element of just that the this there's so much I don't know more of the inner the social interaction around the like games and stuff that happens online, and online just there's a different. Yeah, style right. and medium yeah, for yeah, communication yeah. than in real life, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so. game development uh, conferences are, are may, can also have a different vibe than like a consumer uh, game conferences because sure. you know it's two side two sides of it, right? So game developers just you know I know they understand how hard it is to do all the things, and they're just. You know, I don't know. They, there's more understanding between yep. each other. I'll tell right? you, there's so, a huge difference between the like computer science conferences I've been to that are like vendor focused and stuff like that, and then like the yeah. niche cybersecurity right. conferences I've been to, where it's just like everyone just wants to talk about cybersecurity because it's awesome. Like that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I I feel you on that, and those are the definitely yeah. the kinds of conferences yeah. we would want to go to. Also. Yeah. So. Um, what now that you've been doing it for a little bit now that you've been leading the studio and the development on your new game for a little bit what's been the thing that you found most difficult to deal with maybe that especially maybe mm. something that you didn't initially either think was going to be difficult or you it's just way harder than you thought you said you picked up programming you know a little bit how does well, that, that was, go? Well, yeah that was a whole process uh, but Mm. And uh, the truth is, I mean, the, the difficult part is that it takes time. I think, you know, you, you, you want to do things really fast, but they don't happen fast. Right. They take, <laughs> especially, especially, you know, when yes, we know, we know this very <laughs> yeah. well. Yeah. yeah. You depend on people. Right. So it's like, you also have to let go of that whole control mindset. You know, you have to rely and, and, and some, you know, they, yeah, I think I think it's just getting used to the fact that things take time. And 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 the money aspect meaning well, I do need some 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 some, some form of investment or right. or money, right? So it's like uh, we haven't reached that point yet. But that that's going to be like a whole trip of of how how to do it whether it's through Kickstarter, publishers, a private investor, there's many options, so it's going to be like a whole thing. But uh, apart from that, it's been the truth is it's been really awesome. Uh, I love, yeah. I mean, I I, I I I love being the director and and seeing things slowly but surely come to life. So, yeah, I can I can I can say there's there's a lot of bad aspects to it. Yeah, I'll tell you, Anthony and I exist in a world right where we've really only ever done game development full like part time like in our spare moments and i'm sure yeah. we're both very jealous of your ability to do it full time and like we love doing sure. it part time but also doing anything part time is like a challenge so i yeah. like the, yeah, yeah, yeah. we just imagine the world where we could work on it full time well the truth is it's really awesome and i i i, I hope <laughs> <laughs> I it's hope really you cool guys... sucks for you guys <laughs> yeah exactly no, no, no. i hope you i hope you get there because uh, i i I mean, yeah, it, it is a dream to just do what you want to do, right? Yeah. Uh, so, I am. Um, I'm uh, curious. Let's I'm back up for you guys. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, uh, we're rooting for you. I'm Groove curious. Bo Groove, Groove Box, Box Studios Games. I fucked it up. Games. Groove Box Games. Groove Box GBG. Games. My bad. My bad. My bad. Uh, <laughs> I'm curious. What is your favorite, like most memorable sound that you designed, or like sound design experience? Man, this is this is one of those hard questions to answer just because, man, there's there's been so many. I I, I it's hard to remember. Totally. But do, is there any like that, experience that like sticks out in your head? Like, oh, I remember doing that for this reason because it was like weird or cool or something like that or different than normal. 
Like, did you ever I, have to record like toilet folly? <laughs> yes, actually. Like, oh uh, yeah. And a lot of farting sounds and vomiting sounds. Uh, like, there's okay. A game, hey, yeah. how do you record those? Do you does somebody literally throw up, or is there a technique for making it sound very similar? Well, you you can make. I don't know. It was a combination of just like a voice actor and and then making how do you say uh, like oatmeal and then just kind of splatting uh. you know, the oatmeal <laughs> in, in different places. <laughs> yeah. So. I mean, that was, yeah, that was a really fun. Okay, one of the things I enjoy actually the most is uh, recording voice actors uh, because it's like a re it's like a good break from just like you know being by yourself in the computer, editing sounds, recording all that, and you're with people. And I love directing voice actors because it's fun, and so that you know that whole experience of of vomiting and farting and uh, and toilets reminded me of the two voice actors that that I was recording in that game. And that's, that's just like a really fun process. That's awesome. That is <laughs> yeah. very interesting. Do you have a, do you have a, a least favorite one? I mean, not necessarily because I mean, it could be because the recording sucks. Like you hate oatmeal. And so you don't like vomiting sounds because yeah. you have to work with oatmeal or it's I a pain think, in the ass. Yeah. I don't know. I think now after, let's say all those games, I wouldn't get excited about recording footsteps anymore. Mm. That, that, that would be like a sh like a chore uh, because it's a it's it's very it's actually you know it's it's detailed work that matters so you kind of like have to get it right because these are sounds that are getting played all, all the time and yeah they're they're you know they can be subtle and but yeah they they just matter and it's detailed work and and you have a lot of surfaces and you have to do a lot of detailed work and and a lot you know it's 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 like a whole thing. So I, yeah, I'm glad that I guess for the foreseeable future, I don't have to do that. I'm curious because that makes me think like you've probably recorded a fuck ton of footstep sounds. Do, when, when it comes to like the legal licensing of these sounds, when you're working for these companies, are you generally basically giving them full ownership of these sounds so you can't really reuse them? Or how does that no, can, work for you? Like, like, okay, yes, but I'm not giving them, meaning I can use my recordings because mm -hmm. you don't just take a recording and then put it in game, right? There's a lot of like layering and, and editing and massaging and processing, you know, a lot of the things that still have to be done. So let's say those specific files I gave to the company, I will not use in other games, but I still have all the material that I used to make those specific files, right? Mm -hmm. And those, those are mine, right? So I, I, I can use them as, as much as I want. But, but footsteps, that's the thing. Footsteps sound different in every game. You know, in a first person, they're going to sound in, a, in a, like a certain way. In a 2D, it'll sound a certain way. And depending on like the characters, you know, if they're barefoot, like if they're, it, 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 they're unique. So you cannot just like reuse them. I think, I think and that, that's true for most things sound design. Like you cannot just reuse things without editing at least a little right so well and something else i was gonna i was curious on this on that note um th that especially makes sense given the fact that like you might have two first person games that are the person that has shoes in both games and they run on similar materials in both games but maybe one of them their soundtracks got like more low end in it right and so like you're gonna mix it differently and blah 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 what how in the pro in the in the audio design process would do they usually get, have you had that happen where like the soundtrack stomps on your work and vice versa like where you need to adjust to the soundtrack and you didn't have the soundtrack originally when working like where does audio design get brought in in like the production process i feel like you might want some of those things figured out including cuz you were talking about events um mm -hmm you kind of like want to have the gameplay loop down a little bit so that the audio designers can be working around that. When does audio come in, in the production process? It tends to come in a bit later. Like you say, you kind of have to have, I mean, it, it depends on the team. Some teams are very conceptual and they treat audio as part of the concept art, right? It's like they want some sort of conceptual sure, sure, audio sure, sure, and sure. stuff like that tends to not be the norm. In the sense, those are more artsy studios which are awesome. Like I, I love all that. And, but it is 
audio tends to usually come a bit later once you do have some core gameplay down and 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 you know when it comes to let's say the environments you know they're fairly close to what they're going to look like so the sound designer has a clear idea of what the game is what what the environments are, are like what the atmosphere is supposed to be or, or like all right all these matters mm -hmm. when it comes to like how does the sound work with the music i mean yeah it, it's a process that they both inform each other you know like with after with after party Okay, so the, so the ideal situation is, as a sound designer, I have a close relationship with the composer or, or composers, right? Uh, so in After Party, one, one of the things I would tell a scientific, which is the composer, is like, all right, you know, maybe in these areas, let's have a bit more space. So, because in, in this area, maybe we want the sound design, you know, the details to come out a bit more. So let's make it a bit more sparse. Interesting. And, and it's and it's not like I'm directing him, but it's like we're just talking about our visions, right? Uh, and then other areas is going to be mostly, how do you say, bombarded by music, right? Because let's say in these specific games, some of these areas are just like uh, bars or, or 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 clubs, right? Then like right. music clubs, right? So it's like it's going to be mostly music. And then once you step out, then that that's you know that's the contrast of like all right, then you you can hear the environment more. God, that's so fucking cool. That sounds like such a sweet ass job. Oh my God. Like, you're like, hey, we're working on the bar part. And I'm imagining, okay, that music is up, like you're saying. So Eduardo's probably going to be working on like bar folly work or something because like, like you're going to want that. And like oh, yeah. people yeah, talking glasses in the clinking, background, which would be I think so you much. Posted... Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. I think you. No, posted... no, no. Go. Keep going. You jump in. Yeah. Jump in. You you posted a picture, I think, of me right working, and it was just like recording a bunch of bottles. Yeah, and it was yes. it was for after party, so that was yeah, that was just like I don't know, uh, recording a bunch of foley work that I will use for the game, oh, right? I yeah. have a question for you. Oh my god! Okay. Uh, so, <laughs> it, like thinking of these bottles, right? As an example, my experience record when I've tried to make sounds off of recordings that I do, um, I can't fucking stop touching the sound like I, I how do you ever get to a point i'm sure with experience it gets better but like i feel i always feel like i could maybe make the sound better you know what i mean like yeah how do you and, get and, happy yeah. with things <laughs> oh man i think that's part of the art in the sense that you can't really define that it's like you just at some point you feel it and okay. hopefully that's early enough so that you don't take a week for every single sound. Right, <laughs> right, right. right. Um, I well, don't know, that's man. The, that's, that's part of the, that's just like a whole process. The, and I think so any, good any, to hear. Yeah, yeah. Any creative person, I think, goes through that same process. How does a painter know that the painting is, is finished? So it's, so it's like, I think that's just like one of those obscure parts of, the art, right? Which is again, sure. the, like the, the side of your brain that is not logical. It is not mathematical. It is like, it's just purely aesthetics and feelings and, and, and all that. And, and then it's good to take a break from that because that mm -hmm. can, you know, that can be too much sometimes. So, yeah. So yeah. cool. Yeah. Sorry, go Scott. No, if you have a uh, follow up question, go right ahead. I was going to dive. No, I was follow up aggressively. comment. Well, give us your comment, comment and then I'll divert us. <laughs> I just like, yeah, I think posting date content daily for us, something that I'm, I've been doing now for the last couple of years, like helps has helped me greatly because there's just a, there's a reality you touched on it. There's a reality of like, I maybe want to spend more time on this, but I need to fucking post this, you know, now I, this sound needs to be done yeah. next week yeah, yeah, or yeah. some shit. I have, I, like, I yeah cool, i actually cool. have a okay so like related to that do you have a sound like are there sounds where you think not footsteps because clearly that's you don't you don't like those too much but are there other sounds where you're like i love these sounds and i love messing with them and i know i might want to spend more time with them so i'm sure. going to put them at some point in the production where i have more time sure 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 okay so to to Kind of finish a point with the last question and then i'll get into this yeah is, yeah yeah. i think part of it too is looking at the big picture and understanding that you're building a whole soundscape right
right? You're not building just those footsteps, even though I might get very focused on those footsteps, right? But this is like a whole soundscape you're creating and, and all of it informs each other, right? It's like those foot, how those footsteps sound are gonna affect how the door sounds, right? How the ambient sounds, because they need to remain, they need to sound consistent in terms of that it's coming from the same world, same perspective, all, all this, right? So I think uh, the, the, the antidote to being hyper-focused is, is just like enjoying the larger picture too, right? It's like you enjoy seeing it all come together. Uh, so that's, that's kind of like an answer to that. What was the question again, the last question? Are there like certain sounds that you tend to work on every game? It could yeah. be folly. Yeah. It could be like you love making melee sounds or something. Sure. And so – yeah. No, no. Okay. So I do love UI. I do love UI. And and this is something that I will spend more time in. It's like I'll keep massaging it throughout development just because I don't know why. I, I like those interactions. They're very, like, pure, right? It's like, like it's also usually away from gameplay, right? So it's, it's kind of its own little space, and, and you can kind of do whatever you want with it, right? It's like a... It's like, it's like a little mm -hmm. portrait. It's like, you know, it, you have this big landscape that you're painting, but then you have this little portrait, right? And that and that's the UI, right? That's like the, the home screen, the main screen, right? So it's it's like very, I don't know. It just feels very nice to, to, to do that. Yeah, yeah we, awesome. we touched on it right before we jumped into this call. Yeah. I told Eduardo, uh, I, I, I often judge games. Uh, not, I mean, not like I judge the whole game, but I mean, Part of a big Anthony part of my game, the whole review, game based on his menu sounds. It's, the menus, totally. the men, the menu sounds as you move around. I was just telling Skyler, I was like, the Battlefield 2042 beta is out right now. I played it earlier today. The menu was not very functional, but I loved the sounds. You know, like as you're going around, or whatever, it's like, anyway. Oh. anyway. Skyler, divert. Go oh, ahead. Okay, uh, I that's fine. Uh, Eduardo, I I usually like asking people some random questions as we go through the podcast sure. to like you know break up our uh, our serious. Talks. It's like the UI s sound impact, but for the questions. Like <laughs> Skyler's questions are like the little portrait, yeah. the little break in the soundscape. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. Oh. Skyler's also a fan of UI okay. sounds, is what we've deduced. I, I yes. do like UI sounds. Question one: uh, Can you tell us? three of your favorite games and why Ooh. sure well all right uh let's see three games that got me into games right it's like because when i got into games i started searching you know i started kind of like inquiring about it because i needed a new job but that's not what created like a like a career right it's like i, I became really passionate about it and it's because i realized what indie games were doing and it, just, it was just like something I had never seen before, right? And it really blew my mind. So three games that, you know, instrumental. I have a tattoo that is, it's like a, I don't know if you can see it, mm -hmm. but it's like, a, it's like the, the, the journey uh, written language. Oh, okay. Right on. So, so I got that when I started my, my games career. And so journey was a big one. Uh, Dear Esther is a big one. And that, that game probably has the, my favorite soundtrack of, out of any game. And Kentucky Route Zero is a, is a, is another. Have you? I don't know if you played that one, but uh, it's it's a really I don't, I don't, another artsy. Indie it's been game. on my list to play forever, but it's so hard to motivate myself to play point and click games. Yeah, yeah. That that one's just it's just a. It's, I mean, all these all these three games, what they have is atmosphere, right? And I and I was a big atmosphere guy, even though I'm making a game that has nothing to do with atmosphere. And it's, <laughs> it's just like it's just like pure music making. But this is what I wanted to do, right? And, and the games that I went into are very atmospheric. Where it's like, uh, well, you know, what remains of Edith Finch, Gorogoa, everything. Uh, they're all very atmospheric. So this was like right up my alley, right? Yeah. So, yeah. That's awesome. Um, so, or do you, have, do you have something to say, Anthony? I just, I, he said Gorogoa, and I just wanted to say, I had never heard of Gorogoa until I was looking you up and the things you had worked on before. And I watched your like showcase on your um webpage 
sure. It's sure. fucking. I love the sounds, man. You make some. I think <laughs> one of the things that I love the most about all of the sounds I heard that you showcase in all of your things, all of the sounds you made, is they're so like clear, like in in the sense of they are very. They definitely have their own space in the soundscape. And I mean, based off of everything you're saying here, sure, sure, clear sure, why sure. you know, like you're thinking about that and you're engineering it that way. But sometimes games will have sounds that are. And like definitely Agora right now has this where like there are some sounds that sort of bleed together a little bit. They they almost feel like they don't a hundred percent know what they are either, you know, kind of a thing. Um yeah. and yeah. Not, uh, they don't have the like clarity that comes sure. from like yeah, it, yeah it, there's picture. somehow some dis like disconnect it's between disconnect. what I they represent. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, keep, keep keep going. I don't mean to interrupt. No, no, no. Just a, there's a there's a disconnect between what the sound's trying to represent and deliver from an experience perspective and then like what it actually is right now. Um, but like the Gora Goa, like that is so not a game I would ever play. I am like monkey brained. I play like rocket league and halo only kind of a thing. Those are, I mean, those are the kinds of games I like I'm doom, but, but I try I and get Anthony to play puzzle games or get a- I any other game watch- never works. <laughs> Yeah, I'm I'm a I'm terrible. Good thing we have Skyler. I am I would watch the shit out of somebody watching Gorogoa just for the sounds. It's like and then the folly like transitions and you've got like, you know, the environment in the background. So obviously ex- like great job on that, but like also that's that's um that game in particular, that must have been kind of weird to design cuz you can shift. You have such control over the ambience you can switch between because like if the guy's on a tile where it's fall and breezy and then you like yeah. move into a library with two kit clicks and all of a sudden you're like in a totally different soundscape like yeah, yeah what i guess this is the question i have what was the most challenging game to make audio for that you ever worked on that like the the hardest one to get to something you felt like holistically was good mm. you know Man, I don't know. I, I feel like I have to look into my portfolio. I mean, be like, All right, what? what's wrong with this? <laughs> um, I think the thing is, I I love systems, right? So again, a part of like left brain, right brain. So systems and interactivity, and let's say something like those ambiences coming in and out. I love that, and I I love from a, also from an aesthetic pers- perspective. It's just like the idea of going into all these different spaces and it being very dynamic. I, I really love that. So that's, that's not going to, it's not going to be hard. It's going to be exciting. Something that would be hard is like, okay, if I have to design a bunch of creature sounds. So how the fuck do I design creature sounds? That's like, that's like, a, <laughs> that's like a really hard thing to do. You know, there, there, there's, there's people that just do creature sounds, right? So it's like that to me would be like, all right, I have to do a lot of research now. Uh, about, about how different techniques uh, i have to like invent a bunch of stuff that i just don't know how to do that is the kind of thing that i find hard is if be yeah so does that answer your question <laughs> i mean no, yeah I got, it does uh, yeah uh, I, it was everything maybe a little hard in that regard okay. because i'm thinking no no okay so everything was hard and i'm glad you you pointed that out not I mean, it was hard because a lot of things, everything in that game <laughs> has a sound that it makes, right? And, you know, it was challenging sometimes, you know, like, what does a cloud sound like? That, that Like, like right. there are a lot, of, a lot of things that I had to come up with, right? So that, that was hard. And, and it's kind of similar to, like, the whole, oh, how, what do creatures sound like? Uh, but also the, the vast number of things I had to design for and spaces there, that that game goes through a lot of different, like let's say biomes or, or spaces or perspectives. And it was just, it was just a lot. And that, that was hard. And it sounds hard. <laughs> yeah, it was hard. It took, a, it took, you know, it took a while. Yeah. I mean, maybe, I think that probably everything, effects. maybe every, yeah, yeah. yeah, that, yeah. it seems like you'd have just a shit ton of work to do. And then there's some, like you said, the clouds, like just, I'm thinking to myself, how long would it take for me to convince myself that I know what I'd be happy a cloud yeah. sounding like would be, you know, anyway. Right. So. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I mean, 
and and I think there's I can't remember exactly the number of of things that you can play in, but I I don't know I, I I'm not even it was it was I know it will. The point is, it was a lot of things to make sound for, and some were very easy, and it flowed, and it was very fun. Some were very hard, so, yeah. That's, sure. Yeah, that's so cool. Did you have a question, Skylar? I have one, too. Go Another right ahead. one. So, do you have, when, you, are there studios, game studios, triple, well, let's, let's, I, let me actually force you to say at least one triple A, and then the rest can be indies, but are there sure. game studios that, you really love their audio design that maybe just consistently make games uh, that you uh, like uh, yeah, their yeah, sounds. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, okay. So this is another, let's say, triple I. Uh, <laughs> Play okay. Dead, you know, Inside, right? Limbo. Those are games that are amazing. And the, my favorite sound designer in the, whole, in the whole industry made those games, right? Um, I love Dark Souls, right? Like Dark Dark Souls is, is, is a game that the first one, I didn't play the, the other ones as much. Uh, but that game blew my mind, you know, just as it did many people in that generation, right? Uh, right. I don't know. Let's see. What do I have? Play uh, Dead and From Software? Oh. I mean, those are solid. Yeah. Yeah. Those are good yeah. I, one of the last games I, I was I played a lot was Nier Automata. Mm, uh, okay. That's really cool yeah. sounds. Yeah. That, that I really like that game, too. But, I mean... A lot of games have great, great sound, especially when right. you are in AAA, right? Because uh, they have big budgets, they have a lot of talent working on them. So, so yeah. So something I, I did, just this question just came to my mind, and now I'm like very happy that I get to ask you it. Um, something that I really enjoy in games is when the music of the game has a justification. Because, like, sure. in games, right, the sound effects all make, like, need to be there. They're all justified. But sometimes there's just, like, a soundtrack playing for what's, like, just because there's music there, just because it's, like, you know, a cinematic art, right? So there's music yeah. in the background. Um, how do you, as a sound design engineer, like, making the sound effects, how do you feel about that? Do you, like, are there times where you're, like, I wish I could just make sound effects and not have to even have music in this game? Or do you, what... What do you like and dislike about having music as a part of these experiences? Well, the truth is, I guess I don't think of music. I don't know. Like, I think, I think that's, again, I, uh, okay, how, let's see. How do I answer that? Uh, I think that's a very artistic decision you make in the sense of, like, will this game, okay, what kind of vibe are you trying to put the players in, right? What kind of space uh does it like they kind of what you're trying to achieve is it, is it better achieved by putting music in it or is it better achieved by not putting music in it so i think that's just like music is 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 one of your tools right in terms of creating a, an environment a space so it all depends on on the game on the moment on the scene right um i love music i like like i mean i like one of one of the things I love the most of working in sound is working with composers. So it's like, I'm never against it. Uh, I don't know. I like, does that answer your question? Yeah. yeah. No, that's really interesting. Yeah, I think yeah, like yeah. games, like, I don't know if you've played Bioshock, but like a lot of the music mm -hmm. in Bioshock is like coming over the speakers of the laboratory. It's sure, not sure, like, sure, it's sure, not just sure. there because it's there. And that's awesome. That's like, that's a great creative uh, decision. After party is like that. Meaning, most of the music of after party comes from the real world unless you're like in the outside environment where it becomes a bit more sound designy and more ambience right it's like but when you go into a bar you know you're gonna hear it from the outside and then that be you know as soon as you enter the bar the music you heard from the outside becomes the music for that scene right and and that happens with pretty much every space in the game you know uh, yeah so so that's what we call diegetic music, right? Uh, so I, I love that. And in, in that game, that's what made sense, right? Because it was like, it's a, it's a pub crawl. And, you know, pubs and bars are noisy environments. They, ha they have a lot of music playing. So it just made sense to do it that way. Yep. Right? So, yeah. Cool. Um, great. Yeah. What's up, Anthony? I, How do you feel? I when you were talking about the games and the, I, I thought maybe one 
way you might take it is the way you're talking about the correlation between soundtrack music and audio design is that they're sort of complementary and they work together to form an experience right yeah, yeah. have you ever had to i think one thing that I find very in interesting about the creative process, I've always found it interesting about making music and I've always wondered what it's like for people who are hired to do creative things. But have you ever had to make or maybe work on sounds for a game that from a mood and experiential perspective was really different than where you personally were at? So like the game is a, a happy cheery game but you were in a dark place or vice versa you're a happy cheery guy and you had to make the sounds of hell you know what i mean because after party has hell sure. but after a party does have like a fun spin on hell so yeah, yeah, yeah. you know i don't know has that ever happened to you um yeah and it, and it works positively and it does not work negatively and what i mean by that is i made a game that was a horror game and it was called never ending nightmares yeah and it has a, it has some gruesome imagery and but it didn't affect my mood because I didn't, I don't know, it, 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 it like did not put me in a place where, where I was depressed or anything. It was fun. I mean, most people that work in horror, they do it because it's fun. It's awesome, right? So so I was happy. I was happy to do it, right? But also working on a game like everything made me happier because the space was so, <laughs> so happy. And, and, you know, hearing Alan Watts talk and it's like, ah. So, so. So it's like the game affects me positively, but I don't think it affects me negatively. Okay. That's uh, good. Yeah. I, until you got burned out, I guess, right? And then probably yeah, it yeah, was. Yeah, but that was for a different reason. That was for a right, different right, reason. Right, right, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting. Okay, right on. Yeah. Um, let's see. I had but, another question. But again, I don't know. Maybe I never touched a game that was like genuinely depressing. So sure. who knows? Uh, so you mentioned this idea i call them hot sounds these sounds that show up in the gameplay loop very often like footsteps sure. how do you how, what are some of the key things that like somebody should think of how do you make something not annoying to hear thousands of times you know you just yeah. hope you, you do your best and you hope it, it's not yeah i mean I'm sorry if I don't have like very like technique no. answers. No, 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 no. I don't. I I did not look in for yeah, it necessarily. Sure, yeah. sure, but it's like a lot of things are very intuitive, right? It's like so. Mm. So I feel like when I design, I, I the things I do are just like because I they feel right to me. I, I don't write huge concept, you know, like documents about what I'm doing. Sure. I'm just like it's it's just pure feel. So when it comes to something, let's say like footsteps, how you do, how do you make them not annoying? I think, I mean, I, you know, if, if, okay, if I'm a sound designer, obviously I have a good ear, right? Meaning because I have a good ear, I decided to, you know, uh, Take it pursue sound, right? So it's like, so just things okay, sure. just like naturally come, they stand out to me. Right. Um, and I just like, whatever stands out, meaning like, like if I notice the footsteps, and not because I'm like, ah, oh, this is, this sounds great. If I'm just like playing something else and I notice that something just like all of a sudden came up, uh, I'll, I'll just immediately edit it. Right. And it doesn't matter. You know, if I created the footsteps months ago, then I'll go in and then take that little element that stood out to me, you know? So it's, I think part of it is just like, if I'm designing a game, I'm playing it a lot, right. I'm going into the game a lot. So I'm, I'm just like capturing these little things that stand out to me that they're not supposed to stand out to me. I'm yeah. loving this conversation. If nothing else, this is like a self-validation and mentally somehow. Like I feel there's just yeah. so much little thick and thick. It's, it's hard yeah. to articulate and explain sometimes really the, the reason why stuff is not meshing together. I'm sure you could scientifically break it down. Well, yeah. when the frequencies, you know, interact, no, whatever no. the fuck. It's not about but, that. It's not, it's not about the, yeah, anyways, yeah. Keep going, yeah. Keep going. So, okay, right on. Cool. Scott, are you going to say something? You look yeah, like you're sure. About to. I, I mean, I, I can always say something. Um, Very cool. I think I will intervene again here. Uh, we just got word in the chat that Anthony's dinner is ready, and he's going to have to eat cold <laughs> meat for dinner. Um, on, on that note. Uh, we can start wrapping it up. 
Uh, no, I, I I have no interest in that. I I think that the, if Anthony posts like an Instagram video of him having to eat cold meat and the angry faces he makes as a result, that's good content. So we're good to go. Yeah, it's a good keep, content opportunity. Yeah, it's good content. So we're fine, Eduardo. Uh, yeah. but I'm curious on the notion of meat. Um, what is your favorite food? All right. Well. Coming to Austin, Austin, oh. I lived in Austin for the last decade uh, before becoming nomadic and now I'm kind of like all over the place. But <laughs> uh, I mean, tacos, it, it may, the truth is, okay. you know, as a, Puerto, as a Puerto Rican, we don't eat tacos. Meaning we eat tacos when you go to a Mexican place, right? but it's not part of our culture. But then when I came here, I just discovered that it's like the best food invention uh, in the world. Uh, it's better <laughs> than sandwiches, better than burgers. It's like they can be anything and everything you want. They have they jalapenos. Jalapenos are amazing. So. Favorite Fish taco, tacos? F- favorite taco meat? All, all, I don't know, man. It's like it, that's, you that's have to choose. Tacos. Beef, just, chicken, or fish, or no, something else. I'll, I'll I'll choose, three uh, pas, pastor. No, al pastor. Al pastor? Uh, okay. There's a really good al pastor place near here, actually, that has it on the like right. skewer and everything. It's, nice, it's nice, so nice. good. Next time I go to Denver, we'll, we'll do that. We'll go. Yeah, I'm in. Yes. Um, speaking of your nomadic lifestyle, so chat doesn't know this, but Eduardo actually works like full remotely so he can be nomadic. I saw uh, on Facebook that you're going to spend the next month in Iceland. So yes. does that mean so you're going to eat the that. fermented shark? <laughs> you know, I yeah, I, I, I've been to Iceland before and I didn't. But I should this time. So yeah. Who the fuck uh, thinks of making a fermented shark? <laughs> like, who was the Viking? I would, yeah. I swear, Viking. I just had. <laughs> they just like buried yeah. that shit, and then they were like, "We need something to eat." No, this Let's is see. how it had to happen, right? There were two some like two Vikings who were together, and like, bro, I dare you to eat this shark. And so one of them ate a shark, and then the next one's like, "I dare you put." They, they, somebody forgot about a shark. It was in fucking dirt for way too long. And then one of them's like, I dare you to eat that shit. And he ate it. And he's like, it's kind of like weird. Kind of good. good. And, and, I they, did, and they didn't die. And they were like, all right. <laughs> There's no other ways than two like idiot Viking bros that somebody figured out that you could eat fermented shark. What the fuck? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. that's a, that's okay. Really exciting, that's awesome. Though. That's so cool. That's one of my like dream places to go. And I, I've never been. So uh, that's really exciting. Yeah, hey, I, I mean it's, it's 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 the best country I've ever been to. Uh, so yeah, from, I mean, from what perspective? I mean, it's beautiful. Yes, from from a nature perspective, meaning yeah. this is this is like an alien planet. And the reason is, I I, I like how we're going. We're talking about something that has nothing yeah, to do with it. This, this is the UI. Uh, That's what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's a volcanic uh, place, right? In the sense of like, it came up. It 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 existed because that volcano right which and that means it's young it's young earth so it looks very different from like very old mountains geographically speaking so it's like an alien planet everything looks different it's like you got a bunch of pointy rocks everywhere and di- and weird looking moss and waterfalls it's just like that's yeah it's just like a little furry tail alien thing that's uh, so cool yeah I mean, there's a reason why everyone freaking goes there to film, like, you know, right. space yeah. places and yeah. stuff. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Game, um, of Game of Thrones films there. Like, you know, there's uh, multiple locations. That's that right. Yep. So there's part two of my food question is, what is your favorite animal? These are my two most important questions that I like <laughs> asking every person I meet in real life, not just podcast guests. So, Well, I guess cats is the easy answer, right? It's a good answer. Yeah, I'll just go with cats, big and small, big or small. Ah, any any like cat, big big uh, prey. Favorite cats big or, cat. Yeah, favorite big cat. Well, the thing about big cats is that they're just like little cats, but bigger. Right? Yes, so, so true. So, so imagine like if you love hugging a little cat, imagine being able to hug a big ass cat. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I, no, I'm not. I'm not good. No, you're right. The only big difference so, is that they're... Know, any any of them is, is fine. Yeah, they're just physically incapable of meowing. But other than that, they are very much the same. Yeah. What? They can't meow? Yes, Seriously? correct. Large cats do not have the vocal cord like arrangement that allows them to meow like small cats. Damn, they is got that fucked. Because, is that because cats 
their meow evolved from interacting with humans, right? Because cats. Don't well, that's meow. what I was just gonna say. Right. If yeah. the big cats would have figured it out, we could have all had fucking tigers instead <laughs> of these stupid dogs. You know, like that would have been sick. Yeah, because I heard somewhere could... that cats do not meow to each other. Yeah, they that they don't to... communicate uh mm. verbally they communicate through like physical gestures and stuff yeah see i'm more of a dog person and part of the reason is because cats are just like that indie dev you show the game that you didn't give an nda to it's like the same thing they're suspicious <laughs> they're in too the independent kind of way. anthony just wants the like dumbly obedient animal he doesn't want i'm the just independent like thinkers yeah they're thinking <laughs> they're they're too th they're thinking too much they're too <laughs> autonomous you know <laughs> but i mean i don't have I'm, I'm not much of like an my favorite animal it's like eagle probably those guys it's like feels not bad and nobody can fuck with you anthony's not a big <laughs> animal person and i just i just have to forgive him on that in my brain every day and it's, it's okay. yeah i know skylar asked these two questions that he just asked you to everybody and he says that's how i know if i can trust a person i'm like i don't know what the fuck you think of my answers but for some reason it's like <laughs> no trust <laughs> no trust whatsoever yeah eduardo wa leaves this conversation with i finally found the first indie game that dev that i will have signed an nda to play my game. <laughs> um okay well then i have my special question should we do so we have, do we have one more wait do we have one more sound design related question to break it up we can't we can't go from the that's the right options that's, that's menu true we went to, to the credits menu, menu questions yeah. well i mean do you want to say something about the the new studio yeah. anything at all you know sure, like sure. do you you're you're working on finding building a relation or not building a relationship maybe entering into a partnership with a publisher um I, that's yeah. these are exciting times. yeah hiring like, what people can we expect to work on out the of game? groove box games yeah. yeah well i mean okay let's see uh, so we're making a it's, a it's a music making game and the idea is to make making music very easy and accessible and and just pure fun and take all the work out of making music with, with with other people or alone, the idea is there's a lot of barriers to making music, right? You need to like buy an instrument, you need to get classes, you need to practice for many years, and then song making, you know, like that's like a whole thing. And people love doing it, and that's why they do it, right? So if people love making music and people love playing games and, and having fun, then you know, where where do those two meet, right? And and that's what I'm hoping to achieve. When it comes to how I'm going to get this game published and, and then funded all that, then that's, I mean, that'll be a whole process that I have not started yet. So I cannot uh, comment a lot on that, but a lot of it will be talking to different people, right? Talking to contacts at like different consoles, right? It's like, I, I know like the indie person from PlayStation, so I'll talk to them. Uh, I'll talk to, I know, you know, different publishers or different people that work for different publishers or people that, you know, etc. Right. So it's it's a lot of talking, and see what the landscape looks like, seeing what the options are. Worst case, the idea is to go to Kickstarter, and then we're making a very tight core experience that is just the music making part, and not all the other things that are going to be thrown on top. So the idea is okay, go to Kickstarter, uh, and tell them, hey, you 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 get this now, and then but you're giving us money to build the whole thing, right? Uh, so there, there's different avenues that's, that'll, that process will reveal itself once we start it, right? Which is coming soon because we're finishing this big milestone next week. And then awesome. We, yeah, yeah, so yeah, I'll say that answer. Yeah, yeah, the thing that I love the most and that I, makes me know that like Eduardo is a good game designer and, will, and is going to succeed oh. is the same thing that happens oh. to like us is that I, like Eduardo loves playing his game and like he when i was sure. hanging out with him he like showed me so many things he's like i made this and this and this and all this music and it's yeah. all so yeah. sick and he just sent me something today that he's like i just made it today and that's like the same thing with us we love playing our game so anthony plays our game like all the time today anthony messaged our dev chat and told our other developer josh he's like i was more excited to play your level in our game than i was to play rocket league today <laughs> yeah i was sitting there and i'm like my natural reaction like i was like i want to play and then i was like josh's new level <laughs> it's like yeah, not yeah. rocket league actually you know <laughs> like so. yeah, yeah 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 you're right i think that is that is a good sign uh, i mean that 
I, I was just telling my like the person I'm I'm staying with, it's like, oh man, I love this game. I, I just like and and as as things progress, as you polish things, like, as you add things, remove things, ah, it just gets better, right? So it's like that's yep. a really good thing. So we recently yeah. added an animation to a mechanic, and we were like, I am cannot believe that i like doing this so much more because of the, just this animation you know <laughs> like nothing feels else changed. so much better even though the mechanics are all exactly the same just because this but one they thing make has a big an difference yeah. Yeah, yeah all those little details they, they make a big difference right and today i was playing something skylar made too and like the aesthetics of a certain sandbox item had changed and from far away i could see it and all of a sudden i was like oh damn you know like this is kind of cool you know like i i feel different firing this up it's so weird it's yeah. like i it, like as much as i want to like pr sometimes i wish the monkey brain aspect like was gone like i could get rid of the stupid monkey brain and be perfectly efficient all the damn time like it is so there and you like cannot ignore that it's there and it just it it, it's so loud sometimes like i can't believe i give a fuck about the color or the animation as much as i do you know like so anyway oh but that's good uh, i think that, i think that's a good thing it is good yeah it, I, it, it is good you know it is good you know you gotta, you gotta enjoy it got it. anyway um all right ask it anthony ask it what, but what did you just ask you made me think of something i wanted to ask him anyway oh are you gonna be at gdc 2022 oh yeah, I mean, I, I really hope it happens full on. You know, yeah, if it happens. So far, it seems like they are going to do yeah, it. Yeah, I miss that. I I want to show, you know, my game to people. Like, yes, I'm, I'm very much looking forward to games events happening again. I, I really miss that part of, of the whole. Are we going to be at GDC 2022? That's what I'm Well, so do. I was going to say, Eduardo, for, again, this, and we'll wrap up after, we can wrap up after this question. If you had to recommend to an indie dev who's listening to this now. AKA what, Anthony. Like, well, me too. <laughs> yes, I, I'm listening as well. The top yeah. three, like, game events that you should go to as an indie yeah. dev, which ones would you say? Like, yeah, which ones would you say? Well, okay. I think you have to obviously start local, whatever is happening around you, uh, and expand from there. But GDC is is the biggest one. If you go to only one, you go there. But again, if you go if you're going there, is because you're serious about this because it's not cheap, right? Mm -hmm. So no, it's right. not. <laughs> uh, you don't start at GDC. You start with the local stuff, and I don't know, just any anything that's happening around you that has to do with games and development. Just do it, man. It's, it's, it's all worth it. How about PAX? Have you been to PAX? Has that been yeah. one? Yeah, pa PAX is awesome. PAX is more focused on, on not on development, but it is still yeah. really right. awesome. Yeah, yeah. PAX is still really fun. There's a, there, there, there's different ones, right? So there's like PAX East. Mm -hmm. uh, there's like South, West. I don't know. There's a bunch of them. Yep, I yep. think those are all worth it. I'm trying to think. And there's one in, in California that I don't know how strong it is going now but indicate used to be like a like a big in that's more like in indie development okay uh, there used to be man there used to be one in austin that is no longer happening that was like my favorite one which was fantastic arcade and it was all okay. about indie and it, it happened next to what they call fantastic fest which was like a film festival and it was like this mixture of of film and games and it was all like very art i don't know it, that 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 was it was very awesome i would recommend that one if it was still happening but it hmm. it, it, it got canceled a couple years ago all right it, what's where where would a person go to find out information about this if you had to recommend it to them are there is do you see a lot of this happening on twitter is it like are literally just just google around for local stuff google, yeah i think if you google what game development conferences to go to or anything like that i'm sure things will pop up you know cool. uh, or like game development and write your state you know uh, or your city or whatever mm -hmm. like yeah just do some you do some basic research and i'm sure cool. there's things yeah right cool. on 
All right. All right. It's time. The ultimate question, Eduardo. I'm pretty sure I know. Are you going to add a, a third of- option to it? Because we know the answer if you add that third option. So. Oh, I'm going to add the fir- I'm going to ask the first question, and then I'm going to add a- ask a variant of it yes. after. Yes. Okay? So, okay. The question is, if you could only choose one of these two food options, the other one ceases to exist, never existed before. You never tr- got to try it ever so you're really choosing one or the other. Would you choose burgers or pizza to stay? Man, I, oh man, maybe burgers. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, you, you don't care too much about pizza. No, I love pizza, but burgers. I feel like there's more diversity in burgers. <laughs> That's fair. Like, yeah, pizza. Yeah, they tend to be similar enough, I guess. I'll tell you, it's so <laughs> funny. That... Every time we have someone on the podcast who answers this question, no matter which one they answer, it, the reason is always because they think that one has more variety. Like, almost <laughs> always. It's like, true. All it's the pizza people always. think pizzas have more variety, and all the burgers, <laughs> it's so funny. It's it's very funny. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, my family's from Argentina, so, awesome. like, you know, everything we – it's not a meal if there's no meat you know it's just an yeah, appetizer yeah, yeah, yeah. so yeah, like yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's very latin culture yeah, culture. yeah. so the, okay right on now i actually was i i the variant i was going to ask of this question was a taco related yes, one and actually the fact that you love tacos made me think you would choose burgers because i feel like tacos are really strong in the diversity field as yeah. well because you can yeah. like have a lot of different variants the Obviously, first, okay, you would I'll pick tacos over one. burgers and pizza, right? Yes. 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 Okay. So the question that I was going to ask was, if you could only choose one variant of taco forever, which one would it be? You you said which one was your favorite, but you have four. to keep in mind, you would never get to choose the other ones ever, ever. Breakfast, I mean, this is easy answer. Breakfast tacos. Oh, uh, okay. Oh. Oh, I actually yeah. didn't think you would say that. Which is, what? which is, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, it feels like a very Austin thing, but, or but I'm, I'm sure many other cities. Breakfast but, tacos are the fucking shit. They're yeah. awesome. There was a time where I would eat breakfast tacos at least. I mean, what am I saying? I still do that. Like at least <laughs> <laughs> like three or four times a week. What's your go-to <laughs> like breakfast taco toppings? Like if I want to whip up some breakfast tacos, what, what should right. I put on them? Well, eggs, bacon, uh, refried beans, maybe some onions and peppers, uh, queso. Like the ones I, I buy tend to, they put some queso on top. Okay. It's like legit. Uh, yeah, I think that's, I mean, if you have avocado, you got to throw it in there. Okay. Uh, oh, okay. But I think, I think salsa is, is what, you know, like. Seals salsa the deal. makes a big difference. You yeah, know, it's yeah. like a. Uh, how good the salsa is at the place that you're going to. Totally agreed. Yeah. Okay. So I, I knew, I actually didn't expect you to say breakfast tacos, but I kind of knew you would have a strong winner in that regard. What's your least favorite taco variant that you're like, I don't care if I never eat that version of taco again, or at least that you feel the most that way of? <laughs> like, do you hate fish tacos? Grilled fish tacos? I don't, I actually don't, you know, you were saying something about tripa. Uh, Tripas like, are my favorite tacos. Okay. So I, I, I think the weird parts, I, I can skip them. Like, yeah. No, like, no yeah. weird okay. animal tripas, parts. Lengua, buche. Like, yeah. There, there's like cheeks. Yeah. Uh, that's buche. Yep. Yeah. Uh, there, there's, yeah. I, I, I don't care about the weird parts. Yep. So. Yep. My, mine, yeah. barbacoa. I, I've, like, never had barbacoa that I thought was better than, like, asada, for example. Like, why would I ever eat barbacoa when I, I generally eat feel the same, too? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Me, too. Uh-huh. Um, cool. I okay. Mean, right on. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I could keep you asking, ask, like, taco it's good. questions. It's good. Forever. It's great. Oh. Uh, the only, that, wait, the only last food thing, what's your, what's the best Puerto Rican dish? That you oh. would highly recommend to anybody. Like, hey, you got to try this. Mofongo. That uh, was mofongo. Okay. That was the thing I had when I was in Puerto Rico. So that's yeah, good. Mofongo I did good. all the way. It's plantain uh, with a bunch of, I don't know, yummy stuff. I mean, yeah. Just, just wherever you go, mofongo. But make sure it has some sort of sauce on it. Or with okay. like chicken or, or, or shrimp. I recommend shrimp. 
Yeah, I mean, Mofongo is legit. Cool. It's plantain based. So just, just remember that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Awesome. That's I great. have never had it. So I will try it yeah. next time I get the chance. Yeah. Right on, Eduardo. So where can people find you? Get more information about your game? Where should they follow you? A Ed Sound Design, like in Twitter, you know, mm-hmm. at Ed, you know, Eduardo, Ed Sound Design. That, okay. That's. And, and that's where you'll post new information if we want if we want to see about the studio and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For now, yeah. I really respect the consistent branding everywhere I've found Eduardo. He's Ed <laughs> Sound Design. I'm the Which, worst the person way, in the world yeah. at that. Yeah. <laughs> I need to change that now, right? I need to yeah. start like the whole Groove box. Uh, you need to be thing. Ed Game Developer instead of Ed. You need to be design. Ed Groovy. Groovy Ed. Yeah. <laughs> Groovy Ed Games. Yeah. <laughs> Ed's Which Groovy is, it's Games. Not, it's something I'm thinking a lot about now. You know, like like I am thinking, all right, how do I start this whole branding? Because there's three entities, right? There's there's myself, the company, and the game. So how yeah. how do you start juggling? But that's hard. I mean. Yeah, I'm nobody, but my opinion would be don't change Ed Sound Design because you have some amount of like mental momentum yeah, you have around clout it, right? already behind that, right? Yeah, when you th- when people yeah, think yeah, of yeah. Eduardo, they think Ed Sound Design, and that's also his website. But I mean, I uh, that's I mean that's just my opinion, and I really I agree with you. I really agree with you on the challenge of yeah. That's been one of like, the hardest uh, things we've done is like deciding our brand, how we do it, and how we're gonna go forward with it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, like how we get, how do we get people to listen to our podcast when we have really cool guests and still. (laughs) (laughs) No, but that was a big decision when I started as a sound designer, because I was like, oh, maybe I'll create a company or or maybe have like some sort of like cool sounding website or something. But then it's like, no, no, this is, this is, people need to know who I am and what I do. And it, it became very focused and, and it, it mattered i'll yeah. say your it, website I, is great though like honestly you did yeah, a great job I, with your website thank you. Thank you. yeah yeah no it yeah it was it was good it's easy to remember i mean especially exemplary i mean it it seems english wasn't your first language but you nailed it like that's very easy to remember in my opinion ed sound sure, design sure. you know good job it just flowed it just it just flowed i guess enough yeah right so um all right well you heard it at sound design where can people find us anthony you can find us at kokoalaentertainment.com. There you have links to all our social media, especially Discord, where you should already be there, Mr. Listener, Mrs. Listener, whoever's out there, Mr. Cat, who's listening to this, <laughs> because we do giveaways in there. You can play an idle game that ties into the universe of our upcoming game. If you join, you if you're already part of the Discord, you already know of our tri-weekly giveaways, where we give away your choice of $50 gift card plus your choice of merch. But in addition to that, Keep your eye out. There's even more giveaways coming to the Discord soon. Weekly giveaways on their way. Um, follow us. You can find links to all of our other social media wherever you want to. We make stupid TikToks. We post content on YouTube. We're on Twitter. We even started just posting content on LinkedIn. So if you are of a professional variety out there listening to us, come um, give us a follow. We promise we will do everything in our power to not waste your time, entertain you, and bring you some value. You so, can actually now uh, get to our Discord at discord.gg slash KO Koala, too. Oh, the vanity URL. Thanks to our awesome Finally. community who brought it to level three and Discord for uh, being cool and providing that. You can also find our Discord. You don't even need to get a link to our bio anymore you can find us by browsing in discord just search ko koala and you will actually be able to find us right there in the discovery tab magical all kinds of goodness and of course i didn't even mention we're working on agora we're working on agora it is a single player physics fps for pc and xbox you can wish list it already we have not shown any gameplay so right now you are just trusting us very very bad game devs who don't show any game dev any game studio but but it's coming it's coming it's coming you're gonna love it i I, trust me you're gonna love it and uh anyway that's it (laughs) great all (laughs) right perfect uh thanks everyone for listening um if you're not here watching live on twitch i don't know what you're doing because we give away money on twitch after podcasts with guests so maybe come to twitch on monday when we have randy the 
Pagulion, Brad D. Pagulion, the director of user research for Microsoft, senior director. Yep. So yeah, come come on Monday. He, yep, you. Da- he's damn. He's got some serious stories to tell. Thank you, Eduardo, Thanks so again. much right. for being with us. Peace. Go Thank support me. for Eduardo Groovebox Games and go to his website and listen to all the sounds. If you love sound design, just go to Ed's website. Go to Eduardo's website and just click through and listen to all the sounds. Yep. They're really all right. Good night. All right, Thank bye. You. Thanks, Eduardo. See you.